in Kenya. We have transformed this vision into tangible goals. Our plan is ambitious to expand our current energy capacity of approximately 3 gigawatts to 100 gigawatts of entirely renewable power by 2050 as a cornerstone of our green industrialization strategy. This level of ambition must be matched by the global commitment to achieve concrete, action-oriented outcomes. The first global stock take at this scope is not just a checkpoint. It is a crucial step forward in our collective res response to climate change. It must therefore encompass strategies for mitigation, adaptation, addressing loss and damage, and fundamentally, the means of its implementation. Such a comprehensive approach will pave the way for a more inclusive and robust set of nationally determined contributions in the next cycle. At the heart of our discussion at this COP28 must be a package of ambitious energy transition and investment goals and incentives aligned with our commitment to maintain a global temperatures within 1.5 degree limit. This entails a pledge to triple renewable energy capacity and double energy efficiency by 2030 alongside a significant reduction in fossil fuel dependency. I commend my brother, the COP presidency, for their efforts to converge the world around this global core. The strong participation of traditional hydrocarbon energy leaders in this global endeavor has transformed the conversation and brought us closer to consensus based on democratic inclusion and the best spirit of collective action, as well as multilateralism. Notably, the fission demands deliberate support for developing countries in the past two decades, only 2% of the $3 trillion invested globally in renewable energy has reached Africa. Despite the continent's vast resource endowments and great need for investment, the consequences of this investment gap are starkly evident. More than 600 million Africans are deprived of basic energy services which are fundamental to dignified living and access to essential services such as health care and education. The challenge is compounded by the fact that nearly one billion people in Africa do not have access to clean cooking amenities. A tendency to ignore Africa's developmental and industrialization needs and the failure to invest in our burgeoning young generation is no longer a tenable proposition. We cannot afford to neglect the immense potential or ignore the pressing needs of a continent on the cusp of transformative growth. 